Well, hello there, everyone. It is Nurse Mo, and welcome back to the Straight A Nursing Podcast. I'm so happy that you are here with me today. Thank you for spending your precious free time with me. And today we're going to be talking about the next generation NCLEX. So raise your hand if you're getting real nervous or even a little bit nervous about the next generation NCLEX. So if so, you're definitely, definitely not alone. Hopefully, after you listen to this episode, your nerves will be a little bit calmer because Honestly, I think a lot of the anxiety that's out there about this right now is because there's a lot of really weird rumors, like it's all case studies, it's all essay format, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to know some of the facts, because the more you know, I think the better that you will feel about it. So in this episode, we'll be talking about the NCLEX in general and how it works for those who are kind of new to all of this plus some changes that are in the pipeline for that next generation NCLEX, which is potentially releasing in 2023. Before we do that, of course, let's take a quick moment for our listener shout out. So this one came through on a podcast review from Bulgarian Nurse. So this shout out is for you. And Bulgarian Nurse says, thank you, Nurse Mo. Just like you, I love multitasking. I love listening to your podcast while commuting to work and doing chores. I am starting nursing school in a few days, and your podcast and book have helped me feel confident and enthusiastic. You really present the topic in an understandable and enjoyable manner. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to leave that thoughtful review. All right, so who is ready to talk all things NCLEX? Let's take a quick look at what it is and, in general, how it works. So the NCLEX is that licensing exam that RN and LVN or LPN candidates take to secure licensure. Currently, the NCLEX RN exam consists of 75 to 145 questions that must be answered in a maximum of five hours. Now, I do know that some of the testing parameters have changed and then changed again and then maybe reverted and changed and flip-flopped around with COVID. This is the most recent information that I have available to me at the time of this recording. So this exam of 75 to 145 questions includes 15 pre-test items. They have to be completed, but they don't count toward the score. You actually have to do those first in order to even take your actual exam. And what these are, are these are experimental questions that are being evaluated as potential future NCLEX exam questions. So then... At the end of your exam, because you're not exhausted and just want to go home and take a hot bath or cry in the shower, at the end of your exam, you could receive additional questions that are voluntary research questions. And these questions do not count towards your score, and you can choose to answer none of them, some of them, or all all of them. It is up to you. Sometimes it's confusing for students because the way it's set up right now is that let's say your exam ended at 75 and then the experimental question started and there is a pop-up or some kind of window that says these are voluntary, but then the next question number isn't one, it's 76. So students sometimes think they're still in the exam But just know that when that window comes up that says it's voluntary, read that carefully and make sure that, you know, if it is voluntary and you don't feel like doing it, then you probably don't have to do it. But read that window very carefully. So both the NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN utilize something called Computer Adaptive Testing, or CAT. Now, what this means is that the test is essentially being created for you as you answer each and every question. So as you answer a question, the computer analyzes how you did on that question and determines your level of competency. So if you selected the correct answer, the computer knows, hey, 
this soon-to-be nurse is competent, I'm going to give them a little bit more of a difficult question. I'm going to push the boundaries of their competency. So on the other hand, though, if you selected an incorrect answer, the computer then selects what it considers an easier question for you. So this process continues until the algorithm basically decides that you have met or not met the testing requirements. And at that point, your test ends and you've either passed or failed. So there's a minimum number of questions, right? That's 75. And your test at 75 might just shut off like mine did. It might go to 95 and shut off. So it's impossible to predict if you've passed or failed based on the fact that the exam shut off at any particular time. Many students go through the entire thing and pass, okay? So I know there's a lot of students out there that will be taking their tests and then on Facebook group posts trying to figure out if they passed when honestly you could just, you know, give it a day or two and find out if you passed and go relax, okay? They do this pop-up trick, which is totally not reliable. Please don't do that. You're just going to cause yourself unnecessary stress. Just just go take the day off. Go do something in Joba. Relax, okay, you guys? So anyway, that's how the test works. It shuts off when it decides, yes, they're competent or there is basically they have demonstrated at this point they're not competent and it shuts off at that point as well. So what types of questions are on the NCLEX? So there are a bunch of different types of questions on the NCLEX with some new additions coming with that next generation test. So current NCLEX question types are multiple choice, your standard NCLEX style question with those four options that sometimes all seem really good or all seem really bad. (laughs) Hard to differentiate, but there's one answer that's more accurate than the others. So multiple choice, four options. There's also something called multiple response, which we all lovingly call SATA, select all that apply. And I say that jokingly because universally nursing students hate these questions. So in these multiple response or select all that apply, there's a question and then a bunch of different options and you choose any of the options that are correct. Again, students find these questions really intimidating because they feel kind of open-ended, like it could be one of the options, it could be some of the options, it could be all of the options, and it just, students start psychoanalyzing the question and saying things like, well, they wouldn't have all of them be correct. Oh yeah, they would. Or they wouldn't have just one be correct. Why do that when it's a select all that apply? Oh yes, they would. So my best tip for select all that apply questions, don't even look at the whole list. Look at the first item and say, is that item true or false? And if it's true, then it's one of your options that you select. And if it's false, it's one of the ones you leave blank. And just look at each option individually and don't try to guess what the question writer was trying to do They are not trying to manipulate you. They may have made them all correct. They may have made one correct. They may have made every other one correct. It doesn't matter. They're not trying to trick you, okay? So just look at each one individually. So that's multiple response. And then there's image or what are called hotspot questions. So these questions will have an image. Maybe it's an illustration. Maybe it's part of the patient's chart or a table of some kind. And it asks you to click on the hotspot that answers the question. Then we have fill in the blank. So these questions could include dosage calculations, they could include INO calculations, or some other kind of medical math, such as a tube feeding dilution concentration, something like that. Your answer will be then typed into the answer box, and you absolutely have to pay careful attention to rounding rules on these. Drag and drop is another type of question. So in these questions, you'll place the steps to an intervention in the proper order. And then graphic questions, these answer options will be images rather than words. 
And then there are chart-based questions. So these types of questions will show you information you'd find in a patient's chart. And you may need to click around on various tabs to find the information you need to answer the questions. And then there's video and audio. So these questions may ask you to interpret things like lung sounds or assessment techniques, things like that. Okay, so that's generally what the NCLEX is like, okay? Now, the next generation test includes some different and exciting new formats that the goal is to help really bridge that gap between book knowledge and clinical decision making to really ascertain if the student is able to bridge that gap. So the goal is to more accurately determine readiness to enter practice. Okay, so the format types include enhanced multiple response. So if you didn't enjoy the select all that apply questions before, this might make you nervous, but not if you have a method for doing them, because they really are an excellent way to mimic real world situations. When my patient deteriorates or has a change in condition, I don't just have four options to choose from or five options to choose from. I have limitless options to choose from, and I have to know what the right thing to do is. So these questions could possibly present like a patient scenario and then provide a long list of options for which would be appropriate for that situation. At this time, NCBSN, those are the people that write the NCLEX, and all of this information, by the way, is from their website. I'm not leaking NCLEX information. This is all publicly available NCBSN information. The NCBSN states that these questions will allow for partial credit scoring. That's what they're saying right now. Hopefully that stays true because I do realize when you have one question, but you're thinking through like 10 different things, it feels really disheartening to get 80% of the select all that applies correct, but miss the whole question. So that is what the news is right now around that. Okay, then there are extended drag and drop. So extend and drag and drop. These questions will include more information than the standard drag and drop, assessing a deeper ability to make sound clinical judgments. Because again, you don't just have two or three choices when you're working in the clinical setting. You have lots and lots of options, lots and lots of competing priorities. So this is just trying to make sure that you really do know how to apply your book knowledge to clinical scenarios. And then there are CLOSE questions. It's an acronym, C-L-O-Z-E. I honestly don't know what the acronym stands for, but what they are is they are short answer questions with drop-down menus that contain a few options. So I've seen options on the NCBSN website that have two or three or four options, and these drop-downs can be within tables, within charts, like the patient's chart, or a narrative, like a sentence about the patient or the scenario. And then we have enhanced hotspots. So you see how some of these are just enhanced versions of what's already there? So that's great because... It's not a completely new test. I think a lot of people were getting really nervous about that. So enhanced hotspots. So these questions could be case studies, illustrations, or chart data that asks you to click on specific information to show you know which information is important in your clinical decision making. So that's what those are. And then case studies. And I think this is where students panic because they thought it was going to be all case studies with long answer formats and felt like that was too open-ended personally. I would love that, but that's just me. Okay, so unfolding patient scenarios or case studies basically place you into a patient situation and assess your ability to recognize key data and make these care planning decisions. So these questions, honestly, I'm telling you guys, when I was looking on the NCBSN website, they look really fun to me. And the example that I saw on the chart on the website, NCBSN website, showed a patient chart with a written scenario. 
And in these questions, you'll need to be able to recognize which of the assessment findings and lab results, diagnostic results are relevant and require action. You'll need to be able to focus on that most important data to make a clinical decision and at the same time, be able to identify potential risks to the patient. I've said a million times, if you guys have listened to me talk about this at all, nurses see problems and fix them. We think about potential problems and we avoid them. And that is my two-sentence summation of your entire job as a nurse. And that's what these case studies are doing. They're seeing, can this nurse see problems and fix them? Can they think about what the risks are and avoid them for that patient? So I think I think this is just a great format. You'll also need to show you can prioritize what needs to be addressed for the patient in this particular scenario. And then additionally, you'll need to be able to predict what types of treatments and interventions will be in that patient's plan of care and show you're able to take action on that plan of care. You'll also need to show you can objectively evaluate the patient's outcomes and can recognize if the patient is not meeting their goals. So these case study questions, yes, they are loaded with critical thinking and clinical judgments. And to me, of all of them really seem to mimic the type of multi-layered decision making you will utilize every single day as a nurse. And I just personally, I'm a huge fan, okay? The dynamic exhibit and constructed response questions is another type, and these questions will present information in what's called a dynamic exhibit and ask a question that is answered in short format. And then we have matrix grid questions, and these questions provide a list of options and ask you to categorize them as essential for the plan of care, non-essential for the plan of care, or contraindicated for the patient or the plan of care. Now, I know you guys are apprehensive about a new exam format, but from what I understand, and this is from the NCVSN website, the next generation questions will not make up the entire exam. There will still be some of the standard NCLEX questions you've come to know and love, but it is not yet known like what percentage of the test will be standard style versus the next generation questions that has yet to be decided. They're still doing a lot of research. They're still having students do those uh, research questions, They're figuring all of this out. So what we do know at this point is that the new format questions are based on the clinical judgment measurement model developed by NCBSN which includes six components. The first one is recognizing cues. So this segment of that clinical judgment measurement model correlates with the first part of the nursing process, right? Assessment. But it takes it a bit further. Rather than just knowing what and how to assess, the next generation questions are asking if you know how to recognize patient conditions that warrant further investigation or intervention. In other words, do you know when to get worried about your patient? So there's a sample video on the NCBSN website, and I will link you to the website in the episode notes so you guys can go check all of this for yourself. The sample video on the website shows a nurse who's caring for a patient, and it looks like the patient is complaining about some itching at her neck. So rather than blowing it off, the nurse recognizes that this could be important and assesses the patient's neck, which she sees as red and maybe has some small hives developing, okay? And then the second component that this clinical judgment model is going after is analyzing cues. So this segment and the one that follows really fall into that analysis diagnosis step of the nursing process. So once you've recognized that something is off about your patient, they're itching at their neck and it's red and there's some hives, do you know what this means for your patient? Can you analyze that information? Can you come up with a a presumptive diagnosis about what is going on? So in that sample video, The worried look on the nurse's face indicates, oh, this could be serious. And you guys have to go watch this video. It's very well done. 
So that next segment of that clinical judgment measurement model is priorities and hypothesis. So in this component, you develop a hypothesis about what you think is going on with the patient. So in the video example, the nurse looks up at the antibiotic that's infusing, and you can almost see like a light bulb going off in her head. Basically, the hypothesis is that this is an allergic reaction to that antibiotic. And then the next segment of that model is generating solutions. So this component correlates with the planning component of the nursing process. So to me, this kind of happens almost simultaneously with taking action. But your plan in this case would be, you know, stopping the antibiotic, calling the MD, prioritizing all the assessments you want to conduct, et cetera, all of those things that you would do if you think your patient's having an allergic reaction to a medication that is infusing. And then the next component is taking action. So this component of that judgment model correlates with the implementation phase of the nursing process. So in the video, the nurse stops the infusion, disconnects the antibiotic, and clears the line. And then the final component is evaluating outcomes. So in this final component of the model, it correlates with the evaluation component of the nursing process. So did the action that we performed result in the desired outcome? So in the video, we see the nurse assessing the patient and listening to her lungs, presumably for wheezes which are often present with something like anaphylaxis. And it doesn't go into all the interventions that she did. That's not really the point of it. The point of it was just to show you that she recognized that there was an assessment finding that was concerning. She identified what the possible cause would be, came up with the plan, took action, and then evaluated how well her plan worked. So if your school has been relying very heavily on the nursing process and you feel like you're going to flounder with this more dynamic style of test, I don't want you to worry. As you saw through that explanation, it correlates with the nursing process very nicely, and this is very intentional by NCBSN. You will need to focus your attention on putting the pieces together, thinking through patient problems, and prioritizing the nurse-driven interventions to address those problems. So do as many case studies as you can, and always read the rationales for any NCLEX practice questions you answer. And yes, even the ones you get right, even the ones you think are easy, especially all the wrong answers. Don't just read why the correct answer is correct. Read the rationales for why the other options were incorrect. So I heard another rumor on the NCBSN website, and I guess if it comes from NCBSN, it's not a rumor, but I also heard that nursing diagnoses are not on the next generation NCLEX. So to me, that's fantastic news. I find nursing diagnoses to be unnecessarily complex. From what I have seen of some of the sample questions, what it looks like they are doing is using more problem solution-based language rather than relying on this convoluted language that no one really ever actually uses except for people who are in or teaching nursing school. And again, there are sample questions on the NCBSN website. So hopefully the NCLEX prep materials students rely on will begin incorporating these formats soon. I'm sure they are. Your school should also be looking at how well they're preparing you for this next gen exam as well. So there could be some curriculum changes, maybe more of a focus on case studies and things like that. Personally, I think these changes are kind of great and really more closely showcase how nurses think and make decisions in real time. And I know that you are going to do just great. Okay, you guys, you might be thinking about studying for exams or studying for NCLEX. So if you're looking for a way to review for your exams or review for your NCLEX, I want you to go check out my members only podcast, Straight A Nursing Study Sesh. If you have loved the pod quizzes that we've had, sometimes I'll throw a few pod quiz questions onto the end of an episode. 
then you're going to absolutely love Study Sesh. It is basically utilizing full episodes of pod quizzes and other formats like drills, power hour, which is a deep dive into a topic, and hello, case studies. So the link to check out the information for that is straightanursingstudent.com forward slash study dash sesh. So two words, study dash sesh. All the information you need is there. It's super easy to access. You just subscribe. It's priced, I promise, for a nursing student's budget. And the steps to get the podcast onto your device are super easy. They're step-by-step instructions. And all your questions are most likely already answered on that website URL that I just gave you in the FAQ, okay? So go and check that out, straightynursingstudent.com forward slash study dash sesh, okay? And I cannot wait for you to come back next week and hang out with me, you guys, because I've got a really interesting topic for you, and that is considerations that you have to think about in geriatric pharmacology. Okay, so I will see you back here next week to talk about geriatric pharmacology. See you soon. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing. 